One of the first things you'll notice if you've ever played any game by Quantic Dream is the game's uh, intense obsession with faces. There, there will be a lot of scenes where the camera is really zoomed in on the main character's face. And I think that is mostly in part to show off the technology that they're using to motion capture the actors and faces. And that's always the strongest part of these games. They really rely on their ability to convey human emotions in a medium that historically hasn't been able to do so well. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. So yeah, so that's one of the most attractive things about these games. And Detroit Become Human is definitely not an exception in that regard. The characters, the amount of detail, the emotional range that is visible in every single character is, 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 is really stunning. And that definitely is what keeps you in the game for as long as it does. As any review out there will tell you, Detroit's Become Human comes at a place where we already have a lot of existential stories about androids. What if machines could feel emotions and all that jazz. There wasn't necessarily a demand for yet another android story. In typical Quantic Games fashion, there are multiple characters you can follow around in this one as well. These stories intertwine and the choices you make in one story affect what happens in the other one. And in that sense, the way that these different alternate paths are weaved is very impressive and the game is very much aware of that so much so that at the end of every chapter it provides you with the flow chart of the chapter that you finished and it teases you with the fact that while you might have gotten one ending there is at least i don't know like seven different paths you could have taken that definitely is one of the biggest strengths of this game it's not up to you i'm holding all the cards detroit relies on a lot of tropes I would say, and at points it feels a bit too on the nose. One of the very first scenes in the game is with Marcus and his master, Carl, and Carl basically is like, Sometimes I think you have more humanity than most humans. And it's points like this when you realize that you're playing a game, it kind of completely removes the immersion. Obviously that's something Carl would say to Marcus because he's such a nice guy and Marcus is the, 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 he's the protagonist, he's one of the protagonists and therefore he obviously has human emotions in him. At other times when the game is being much more subtle, that's when we actually start to see some more interesting things. The more interesting parts are with Connor, who is a much more nuanced character than Marcus, I would argue, because Connor's job is to hunt other androids. He's basically the Deckard of this story. His job is to go out there, find deviants, which are androids who have achieved full intellectual freedom, I guess? Autonomy? It's very interesting seeing Connor go through the process of becoming a human himself. The opening sequence is Connor going into an ongoing crime scene to save a little girl from a deviant android who is threatening to kill her. The way he does it, at this point, Connor is, you know, very much a, a uh, law-abiding android. And at least in my playthrough, I used, I slash Connor used our powers to trick this android into letting the girl go, only to be killed afterwards. You lied to me, Connor. You lied to me. So I don't know if Connor himself knew he was lying to this other android at this point, because I didn't, but he was able to successfully follow through with his mission. And as the game progressed, we were provided with more opportunities to choose on behalf of Connor, which I guess in this sense is symbolizing how much more he's becoming a human. One of the main reasons all of, all of these main characters are becoming more human is the fact that they're being controlled by humans themselves. Obviously me as a human, if I'm given a moral dilemma and the options are acting like an android and acting like a human, I am more likely to pick the human option. The most annoying part of this game uh, has to do with the very 
chaotic nature of the inputs sometimes. And it could be argued that the inputs are chaotic to represent the fact that the situations our characters find themselves in are chaotic as well. And to some extent, yes, that's a very fair argument. But the problem is, it's not fun when you spend the entire game making sure that you pick the absolute correct decisions to make sure that you get an ending that you would like to see. Having that ruined by a single mistake in a quick time event where you're supposed to mash X constantly, that's just not fun. Quick time events are nothing new, but in other games like God of War, the inputs you use in those quick time events more or less correspond to how you would use them in the regular gameplay. Whereas in Detroit, they don't always make sense. Sometimes they'll feel randomized. Sometimes a circle will be a punch. Sometimes it will be a kick. It would have been better if there was more consistency in how the buttons were used. And that way, at least you could legitimately say that skill is involved in making sure that the QTE is successful or not. I also want to talk a bit about the android existentialism in this game. It is a very interesting philosophical question whether androids can be considered as living things. Because compared to humans, we know that they were created for, for a specific purpose. We know that they're actually machines. And we know that their intelligence and emotions are all simulated, unlike humans. Obviously, there's some more nuance to this depending on what kind of a philosophical approach that you have to life. If you involve souls and spirits in this, then androids are obviously losing. Or maybe they're not losing, maybe souls can exist in machines as well. There's a lot of different things that you can think about, but that's not necessarily discussed in Detroit, I don't think. In fact, Detroit doesn't present this as a debate. Detroit is clearly biased towards the idea that androids are living things. Or at least, maybe that was because that's the, the, that's the playthrough I got. But the way that the... Um, various choices are presented to you, makes it difficult for you to side against the androids. It could be argued that that was a conscious choice on part of the designers of the game. They're like, aha, see, we made you think that androids are human, haha, that, that's our point. But I don't necessarily think that was the case, mainly because the main characters are all androids, right? There are no playable human characters. So we don't necessarily ever get an, a, a true human perspective in this game. We only get the androids, and the androids are very clearly persecuted. And if you are a decent human being, you will want to side with the oppressed and not necessarily the oppressors. If you do, though, that, that's, that's your problem, and you're a bad person, and you should feel bad about yourself. Revolution and freedom narratives have been done over and over and over and over and over again. And in the way that the story concludes, and in the way that everything builds up, Detroit doesn't offer anything new. What I'm trying to say is the questions that Detroit is asking are not that interesting. I don't know, this is my personal take, obviously. I like it when the existentialist question is more about trying to find meaning in one's life. And I don't necessarily like it when a story that I'm reading takes that for granted. Overall, though, I, I will have to admit that this was a fun gaming experience. There were parts that made me feel frustrated. There were certain story decisions that were so derivative that I couldn't help but roll my eyes. The quick time events were annoying at points and not fun. At other points, you can find the thrill of a good quick time event in this game. It's in there. And what's also in there is a very good starter story for what I would like to call the android existentialist genre. If somehow this is the first time you're experiencing a story like this, it works really, really well. There are some really nice touching and moving moments in there. All the beats you would expect from a good story are there. Either way, you probably should check the game out yourself and find out. So yeah. Thanks for watching.